Good afternoon. My talk today will be about the special characteristics of atopic dermatitis in children of different ages. These are my conflicts of interest to declare. Well, the pediatric age spans from birth to 18 years. During this period, an amazing process of maturation and development occurs with different periods named newborn period, infancy, preschool childhood, school childhood, and adolescence. Atopic dermatitis also evolves with kids' ages. In early infancy, a deficient skin barrier and possibly some altered immune mechanisms may cause eczema. Eczema causes further barrier deficiency and environmental factors can also influence the skin barrier integrity. As a result, eczema may chronify and lead in late infancy to a state of immune disturbance that is capable of further inducing and perpetuating eczema. Eczema and the other immunologic comorbidities of atopic dermatitis then become a chronic inflammatory disease in childhood that may persist into adult life. Atopic dermatitis has usually its onset in early infancy. More than 50% of children will develop atopic dermatitis during the first six months of age. This group of early onset patients is at high risk of severe atopic dermatitis, especially if eczema is extensive in early infancy. Finally, early onset atopic dermatitis carries a higher risk of allergic comorbidities of atopic eczema. It is hard to estimate the cost of atopic dermatitis in children. Atopic dermatitis incurs in both direct and indirect costs, and especially the burden of inadequately treated atopic dermatitis is even higher. Whereas AD management in all children and adolescents is standardized in several guidelines, the treatment of atopic dermatitis in infants is a matter of debate. For example, emollients are used universally recommended, but no evidence exists about which is the best emollient and how much emollient should be used on a daily basis. Finally, most infants tolerate poorly the application of emollients directly over active lesions of eczema. Likewise, no evidence exists about the correct frequency or duration of bathing in infants or whether using bath additives is of help for atopic dermatitis. Topical corticosteroids are the first line therapy for infantile atopic dermatitis. However, there are no guidelines regarding the optimal dose or potency to use. There are concerns about the use of corticosteroids on large areas of the skin, especially given the higher absorption through infantile skin and on sensitive areas such as the face. These concerns have turned into phobias that are being promoted by physicians, other health providers and pharmaceutical companies. The most inconvenient consequences of corticophobia are non-adherence to therapy and under-treatment. Well, the situation about topical calcineurin inhibitors in infants is far from easy. They are currently not recommended as, as first-line therapy and below two years of age. The black box issued almost 20 years ago still remains and has been the cause of further phobia to the therapy. Systemic immunosuppressive therapies for atopic dermatitis in infants are seldom used and their use is always off-label. Antihistamines do not really add any benefit to atopic dermatitis and sedative ones are not recommended. Corticosteroids, though very safe and effective in the short run, are best avoided as a long-term therapy. 
a new era for targeted treatment of adaptive dermatitis is open for all the children, but their potential administration to infants raises many doubts. Difficulties in achieving a safe and effective therapy, especially in severe atopic dermatitis in infancy, lead to despair and the use of alternative treatments. None of these has shown any consistent benefit in atopic dermatitis, and there are obvious eth ethical issues about these products. Hence, it is clear that infantile atopic dermatitis is difficult to treat and many infants remain undertreated. The main and met needs for pediatric and especially infantile atopic dermatitis are the following. Achieving early control of atopic dermatitis in infants to prevent chronification in immune disturbance and comorbidities. Developing new topical treatments that are effective and safe. Educate appropriately the parents regarding the use of topical treatments, mainly corticosteroids. Spread the use of knowledge about systemic therapies for severe eczema of infants and children. Thank you very much for your attention.